Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we're gonna be working on one of my favorite versions of the NES, which is the Top Loader. So the Top Loader was released by Nintendo North America and also in Japan known as the AV Famicom. And it was around, um, you know, the end of the NES's lifespan, like around 93, 94, something like that. And so it is way smaller than the standard front loader toaster, as you guys can see here. But it has a pretty big disadvantage, which is that it has RF out only. So it's really kind of a shame because like on the one hand, Nintendo finally got the loading mechanism right. This one doesn't have the blinking red light and all the issues that the original version has. However, it's got a huge video drawback, um, you know, and especially if you live in a very urban area, you get all sorts of interference and uh, the overall experience isn't that great. So what we're gonna be doing today is installing this. So this is Tim Worthington's latest revision of the NES RGB, the NES RGB 4.0. And it has a whole bunch of features, including um, in-game reset and the ability to change up to six different palettes by using button combinations. So it's a pretty nice upgrade as compared to the older revisions. So let's go ahead and um, take this thing apart and install the NES RGB. Okay, so before I start doing the mod, I thought it would be useful just to show you what the original experience was like with the NES top loader. So right now I have my flash cartridge um, installed in the console and I just have this menu brought up here only because I wanted to show you one of the really big issues with the top loader and that is the jail bars that it has. So if you look at you know this little box here in the center, it's supposed to be a solid gray but it's definitely not solid gray. As you can see in the image here, there are these vertical lines going through um, any solid color. And so it's really, really obvious on the top loader. There's all this video noise. Um, this is true even if you do a composite video mod. I mean, it, it helps a little bit, but you know, not that much. Um, so the gel bars was a really big issue even back then um, with the top loader. And then let me go ahead and just load up um, Super Mario Brothers here. And yeah, you can see that there's, you know, just kind of like color fringing and just an overall blurriness. And I'm using a, uh, a flat panel here. I'm not using a CRT. I think the CRT would help a little bit, but overall you're still gonna get an experience that's very similar to this. Um, yeah, so again, I, um, I think that doing this mod makes a really huge improvement because then you get composite video, S video, RGB component and all of those look better than this. All right, so let's go ahead and take the console apart and get started. Okay, so taking apart the top loader is actually really simple. All you need is a game bit screwdriver and a standard Phillips. And with that, you can just take off the top shell and the top RF shield. And here is what the board looks like. So it's really nice. I mean, the design is super compact. You've got your CPU over here and we've got our PPU, which is the graphics chip over here. And this is actually where we're gonna be starting our journey here. We're gonna be desoldering this chip. This is definitely the hardest part of the installation. And normally when I'm desoldering a large chip like this, I use three different steps um, to do so. The first step is I'll flip it over and I'll add fresh solder to all of these pads here. This just helps loosen things up and it makes it easier to remove all of the solder. And then I'll come in with my Hakko desoldering gun and that will end up removing probably about, you know, 90% of the solder that's holding all these pins in place. And then the final step is that I'll take a, a hot air gun and I have it set to about 300 or so Celsius. And then I'll just pass it over all of these pins and just kind of loosen up the last little bits of solder that are holding it down. And then very gently just kind of lift the chip out. Um, and that works extremely well for me. Um, it's very rare that I have any issues with vias or, or any kind of damage that occurs as a result of that. And it's very, you know, very consistent and reliable. So yeah, that's what we're gonna go ahead and do right now.
Okay, so the PPU has been removed and I didn't have any issues with the vias. All of them are intact and nothing got lifted or damaged in any sort of way. Um, and then from there, I went ahead and installed this precision pin socket that comes with the kit. So now what we've got to do is assemble the stack of the NES RGB and this adapter board. So this little adapter is necessary because without it, the NES RGB actually would just sit like right here and it would jut out of the shell. So, so what this does is it just kind of sits over here and shifts everything over to the left a little bit so that everything can fit inside of the case. Um, so it's a little bit tricky to do this. If you do it in the wrong way, you can actually really mess things up big time. So what I like to do first is build up part of the adapter board by, you know, taking these precision pin, um, headers and installing them into the socket. These also come with the kit. And then I'm going to go ahead and start by, by soldering this into place. And then we're going to go ahead and work on the NES RGB board and get um, these little shorter headers installed onto it, and then also get another socket installed here. Okay, so we've got the NES RGB board set up with the shorter pins on the um, on these two rows right here, and then we've got our precision pin socket installed as well. And this one's also set, and it has the longer precision pin uh, headers installed. So now all we've got to do is just put them together. So we're just going to simply line them up and go ahead and do the final little bit of soldering. Okay, so all of our main soldering is now finished for the NES RGB, and you can see it right here. And I also went ahead and closed a few jumpers off camera that are also necessary for the mod. One is right here, J3. This supplies power to the board. Uh, J5 is closed because this is an NTSC console. And then we're closing jumper J1 because we're going to use button combos to switch pallets and do the in-game reset. And finally, jumper J10 is closed because we are going to um, use the de-jitter function that is uh, present on the NES RGB. This is something you should do if it's a North American console or a Japanese console. Okay, so all of that is taken care of. Um, and so now what we're going to be doing is we need to um, remove two more components. We're going to get rid of this uh, power connector here. We're also going to get rid of the RF modulator, and that's because this 3D printed part is going to go here in its place, and that is going to have a power jack, and it's also going to have a Super Nintendo multi-out, and this is going to carry all of our video and audio signals. Um, so once that's all installed, <clears throat> we also have to flip over the board, and we're going to install um, four wires in this region over here, and that's going to be for the in-game reset. All right, so let's go ahead and start by removing these two components. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done some very basic wiring off camera, and I just wanted to show you uh, the way I have this Super Nintendo style multi-out set up. So this PCB is quite helpful because it actually labels what goes where in case you need it, but I'm also gonna put a link in the description that shows you how to wire up this multi-out correctly so that it's compatible with all Super Nintendo style cables. So um, 
the way I have it labeled here is uh, color coded. I always use that kind of wire because it just makes life easier for this sort of thing. So we've got our audio here and this the NES does mono sound only. So it's gonna be doing dual mono to the left and right speakers. So these two are together. This um, lighter color here, this lighter red color is our five volts. This yellow here is our composite video. White over here is Luma. This brown is Chroma. Um, these two pins right here are both ground, so they're tied together with this black wire. And then I've got RGB for red, green, and blue. And finally, C-Sync, which is this uh, darker gray wire right over here. Again, I'm gonna have that listed um, in the description. That's a much easier way to follow along. But yeah, I just wanted to show you how I set up this whole multi-out connector. And then we also have the board itself and I've installed four wires on the underside. So you can see that three of them uh, go over here to player one and you can see that I've attached them to these three pads right over here. And then finally I have this purple wire here and this is tied to the reset button. This is actually physically where the reset button is located. So these three wires are connected to the clock latch and the data lines on on player one. So what I'm gonna do is connect those up to um, the NES RGB board. And um, you can see I have them all pointing this way. That's because there's a spot under the shell right where the power switch is, which is cut open. So it means that you can easily route these wires underneath without getting them uh, caught on anything or not having to cut the shell of the console. So, so yeah, so that's what we have um, all set up here. And now the next step really is just to solder in two wires so that we can bring audio in to the NES RGB. Okay, so the last two wires that we need to install are so that we can tap into the audio. Uh, so the audio comes from the CPU here and you can get it on pins one and two right here, but it's far easier just to tap in on these two resistors right here. So this one is R4 and it goes to pin one and R5 and it goes to pin two. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach two wires to that. Okay, so we're all set here. So this white wire here, this is gonna go to pad B on the NES RGB board and this light gray wire over here is gonna go to pad A once we get everything all set up. So yeah, at this point, it's kind of like a spaghetti monster mess of wires. <laughs> so um, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually partially rebuild the top loader and then we're gonna make the final connections and give it a test. Okay, so I have got the Nintendo more or less assembled completely at this point. Um, and you can kind of see why I had to do it this way. So when you insert the NES RGB, there's actually a screw right underneath it. So if you really want to save all of the screws, which I did, um, you kind of have to build it like this with all of the wires just hanging out ready to be connected and then put this on and do the final connections. Um, this is one reason why if you can get the Voltar QSB specifically for the top loader, it makes things really nice because then you can just easily plug it and unplug it from the multi-out. Um, here is the multi-out by the way, and you can see that it came out really nice. It's all plugged in and looking good. Um, so yeah, now there's really only one thing left to do, which is to wire everything up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick and then go over all the connections and then we'll give this thing a test.
Okay, so we've got the NES RGB all finished up, and so I just wanted to go over these connections that we have here. So most of these connections right here come straight from the multi-out. They're the ones that we discussed beforehand, and they're basically power, ground, and all of our video signals. Um, right over here, this purple wire, this is the sound output from the NES RGB to the multi-out. And these two wires right here, these are the inputs from the CPU. So this is pin one of the CPU, otherwise known as pad A, and pin two, which is known as pad B. So on this side over here, we've got the, the wires that go to controller port one and also to the reset line. And that gives us our in-game reset and palette swapping. So the purple wire right here, that's reset. And then for the, um, the three wires here, the blue, is clock, um, the green is latch, and then this silver one here is data. And so that corresponds to the ports right here. And so this is clock, latch, and data. And then you just match it up. Um, and then finally, yeah, here's the, the multi-out. And it really looks very nice. And it gives it a kind of professional, original sort of look to it. And so, yeah, now I'm gonna go ahead and just close everything up and let's go ahead and give it a test. All right, so the top loader is all plugged in, and so let's go ahead and power this thing on. All right, looking good. So our EverDrive is loading up just fine, and I'm just going to pick a game. Uh, let's go ahead and do, yeah, let's do some Double Dragon. I love this game. <laughs> could always play this. All right. So as you can see in here, everything looks really sharp and crisp and it's looking perfect. So now if I go ahead and I hold select and start and then just toggle through with left and right, I can actually change the palettes. So actually, let me, let me pause. And then if I just go left and right like this, you can see I go through all the different palettes. Now, if I hold the right button down and select and start, it brings me back to the default. And I, if I also hold left select and start, I can actually turn off the NES RGB altogether like this. And then if I hold right select and start, it comes back on. And then finally to reset, you just hit select start A and B and that's it. And I'm back to my main menu on my flash cartridge. So yeah, this installation was a success and hopefully as you guys can see, it's a huge upgrade relative to the original RF output on the top loader. And there's absolutely no jail bars whatsoever. So you can see that these are solid gray lines. There are no jail bars at all. Um, so it's a huge, huge upgrade uh, over the stock system. Um, all right, so that's it for this week's video. If you guys like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have uh, videos out like this every week. And of course, if you have a console that you want repaired or modified, you can reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.